What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Facts on the Ground. I'm Misty Winston, joined by my co-host, Jesse Zerwell. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, been to protest together on many different issues. Um, and he's also the host of the Unity or Death podcast, which you should definitely check out. Um, and we're going to be talking today about some uh, direct actions that he's planned for September 11th in DC uh, in the damn wars. Um, so Magnus, thank you so much for coming back to the show. Hey, yeah. So, you know, the, the internet, internet breaking guest has, has reappeared. <laughs> I, I can't wait for the usual usual crowd to come out, but uh, it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, um, the everything around the event in DC, which uh, like I said, and the damn wars has been going really great, and it's going really great because the country has collectively decided to become clowns over the last week and have the dumbest positions on war ever. So it's been great. You know, as horrible as it is to say, it's been great advertising for me to just be able to go into into neocons and idiots, you know, Twitter feeds and just drop the link to the protest and get 100 followers off of it and maybe get more people there. And uh, we've expanded now. I think we have nine local events across the country, too. We have Florida, Texas, Seattle, New York, uh, Colorado, Ohio. So, like, we're sp spreading all over the country on that, which is great. And yeah, I'm just super excited about it. Um, didn't expect it to go this well because this is right. the first thing I've ever planned. <laughs> like nice. no joke. This is like my first like real organized from the ground up my like, you know, me and a small group of people's events. And we have Scott Horton's going to be there. Skeptical Vet's going to be there. Spike's going to be there. There's a couple other people that are probably going to be there, but I can't announce them yet, but there are people that might surprise you, which is awesome. Um, I think and this is it, at the main event in DC. Yeah, it's the main event. And then I think uh, the one in uh, Florida is actually a joint protest between the Florida Mises Caucus and the Florida Green Party, which is like, yes, that's, <laughs> like, that's literally that's what amazing. I'm- amazing. That's what I'm trying to do. That is what I've been trying to like bring together and, and create from the very beginning of all this. So I'm like, that is right there. That's what it's all about. How so. dare you bring people together, Magnus? I love when people get pissed off at you for like bringing people together across ideologies, which I mean, people get mad at me just for like being willing to speak to people across different ideologies. But like you actually walk the walk, you have people on your show who disagree. I've been on your show several times with people I absolutely don't agree with on many things. Um, but you know, you, and it's not like, you're not bringing us on to fight you're bringing us on to discuss issues that where we do agree and right. that we can have, you know, like, you know, constructive conversations about, which I love. Yeah. There's like a hundred thousand debate bro streams and mm -hmm. channels and call out and all that. And then I look around and I'm like, Oh, there's very few people that are like, actually like bringing people on to have a conversation about the shit that actually matters instead of like, Oh, here, here's generic right-wing YouTube guy to de debate generic DSA member about feminism or something. And it's like, yeah, it's frankly, Jimmy I hate debate shows. I hate them. <laughs> like I have friends who've done debate and I'm not I, just for me personally, they're not, they're not constructive in any way. Nobody goes on to a debate to seek to learn something or open their mind. You're trying to get like your talking point in. you're trying to like get your slam and you're trying, and it's so just it's a waste of time like if if, if you want to have like a conversation with me where on an issue that we disagree with and you want to come in good faith and be open to what i'm saying and i'll be open to what you're saying i'm down with that but these debates are so um they're not constructive at all it's just like people it's, trying to get their digs in it's, it's so what dumb. jimmy Dore refers to so often confirmation bias mm -hmm. that's what the interactions are about even if they're branded as a debate it's about each side confirming their biases and then we can all go home and say that was a constructive conversation even though it wasn't yeah get get your zings in that can be yeah. clicked and shared for the rest of ever and it's so frustrating it's like instead hi, let's talk about like stuff that matters can we like see you know, stuff we can get together on things we can work towards pr uh, addressing a single issue from like 15 different angles like can we do that you know but never and that's yeah. what i'm most excited about for the event um we pretty much have a bunch of different angles of we're going to have experts from obviously all sorts of different things, whether they're journalists, whether they're people like Scott Horton, who's more of an intellectual, and then we're gonna have veterans that were actually there and on the ground. We have two of them that were served in Afghanistan and Iraq. We're trying to get a third. And then the last thing we're looking for and what I really want to get on stage 
is somebody from one of these indigenous cultures that have directly experienced the awful consequences of US imperialism and foreign policy. Some, whether it be someone from South America that can talk about the CIA and all the spooky shit we do down there, or someone from Afghanistan or Syria or Iraq that have been like, hey, you know, this is my country we bombed. And that's the last kind of piece of the puzzle I'm looking for there is to get somebody like that on stage. Cause that's important. And I think like when you, the way the event's going to go, you're going to have libertarians go on that explain economic positions and angles that maybe left-wing people never heard of, but I also going to have left-wing people that can explain uh, like the indigenous angle and the imperialistic angle and kind of destruction of culture. And a lot of libertarians may have never heard that angle of it. And we could all just fuse these together to be this giant message of fuck war. You know? Yeah, no. And I, I'm so glad that you're doing this um, because the, and we've talked about it on this show many times, but the anti-war movement in this country has been all but nearly dis- destroyed. I mean, there is no anti-war movement. Um, I mean, and we're seeing it right now played out in real time with the Afghanistan stuff. You have people like Marianne Williamson saying that we, we have to stay in Afghanistan to protect the women as if us being there protects women. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I know you have a lot to say. There's been, I mean, you've been on Twitter um, raging at everybody. Um, so what's been some of the worst shit that you've seen on Twitter? Um, the, the the neocon stuff of like this, the particular one with Trump bothers the shit out of me because so many like people in the Trump camp have been like, Trump would have never allowed this to happen and he would have never abandoned our allies and blah, blah, blah. Guess what, people? Trump already did this in Syria in the exact same way in North East Syria with the Kurds, did the same shit, gave them a bunch of money, funded them, trained them, gave them air support, and then one day said, nah, fuck it, and bailed. And now they're getting utterly like ruined by turkey and shit and, and the u.s just bailed so like that's obviously and not for the bit, first time yeah not even yeah. for the first time obviously it's a little bit different of a circumstance but as someone as someone who knows people who fought in rojava it's like bro like no trump would have done the same thing and and then the obviously the counterpoint of that is like even if trump didn't do the same thing what would have been the solution just start launching fucking hellfire missiles into afghanistan while we're evacuating like, no. And I see a lot of people doing that. Of Like uh, this one girl, I forget her name. She's some conservative blue check. That's like all the leaders of the Taliban are in Kabul. You know what that means? We should just drone strike it. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's not necessarily true because right now the Taliban's political communications office, at least is based in Doha. So they have a much more, international reach than people know or want to give them credit for yeah they have a crazy social media gang <laughs> like mm-hmm. know, everyone's seen the videos of them like at the gym and like riding in the bumper cars <laughs> <laughs> and, like it's, it's like so bizarre yeah, it's surreal <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no, there's there's obviously that end of like the right-wing people just frustrate me of just like begging to go back to just you know middle east man bad middle east man need to go away bomb middle east man and then obviously, like you, you brought up the, the kind of neo-lib Bidenite type people that are like, my women. Mm-hmm. And, and, and as Reed pointed out, which was so great when Reed pointed out, like, as if Afghanistan is the only place in the world where women are treated poorly. Right. <laughs> we're like, so if, if we're, if we're going to p- apply that standard universally, are we just going to go flying through the world, just bombing everybody? I mean, like, hello, Saudi Arabia. Right. <laughs> Who we give money to. Right. <laughs> a fuck ton of money to who's committing a genocide right now what has the u.s done in 20 years in just the past 20 years we'll put aside the decades before that what has the u.s done in the past 20 years in afghanistan to improve the situation of women as it's often referred to it's done absolutely nothing it's made token gestures and it's paraded young women like malala around as an example of the Pro women heroics it's carrying out but it's all bullshit and it's a convenient excuse for people who want to continue the war whether they're conscious of wanting that or not it's a convenient excuse for them to try to justify their position the u.s went into afghanistan for one reason and it was revenge it never gave a shit about the people of afghanistan the stability of the country and you don't really have to look beyond the surface of what's happened there over the past 20 years to get that. But nonetheless, people, 
think that a lot of people think that the U.S., which has been destroying Afghanistan and bringing misery to it for two decades, is somehow all of a sudden going to fix it. Right. And we, we caused it. Afghanistan, like, like, like Pasta was talking about it last night. Afghanistan used to be on the hippie trail. It was yep. a very, there was very progressive element, elements in Afghanistan. It was very modern, culturally diverse country. We fucking ruined that. We did. <laughs> like, that's on us. Obviously, the Soviets can get a little bit of blame too. But more recently, that's our fault. We did that 100%. shit. 100%. I mean, there are pictures from like the 70s of women, you know, in just wearing whatever they want and, st- you know, going to college and all of this stuff. And we we caused that to end. We caused. So it's like, you want to go protect the women. Well, we fucked it up. Like, I, I don't know why anybody in the year 2021 thinks that United States intervention is good for anybody. It never is beneficial for the people in which we're helping. <laughs> once, the, once the CIA partnered with the Pakistani ISI and the Saudis at the same time to ostensibly route the Soviets in Afghanistan, that's when you started seeing women at university getting acid thrown in their faces, for example. The US played a part a huge part in making that happen. And not only making it happen, but supporting it and encouraging it among these jihadist elements. Yeah, and I I got into so many arguments with conservatives because I'd bring up that we've trained and funded the Taliban. And they're like, no, we trained and funded the Mujahideen. And I'm like, guys, (laughs) you, you need to read some Scott Horton or something. Do you really think the only time that we ever gave money, training, resources, or support to the Taliban was in the 1970s? And not in the 1990s when we did it and not in the early 2000s when we did it and not what was it like two, three years ago where we gave them a bunch of stuff to fight ISIS. Mm -hmm. Like, no, like this, it didn't happen once. It's happened continuously. And you see those pictures, um, which again, like I'm not trying to normalize the Taliban or make them seem good people. But again, they have a great social media game where they recreated the flag raising of Iwo Jima with the Taliban flag with a bunch of US military gear that they had on mm-hmm. them that we gave them. Like the, the Taliban special forces operations that they mention all the time in like big scary, like they're gonna come here and blow up America or whatever. They're equipped with US military weapons and US military gear because we gave that to them to fight ISIS. Like, oh. Yeah, and then we just <laughs> abandoned a base and left all of the shit there for them to come and take. It's a drone. Yeah, yeah like that, that- it's unbelievable. And it's not like we don't have, uh, it, this is far from the first time that we've done this. <laughs> It's just amazing that we have to keep having this conversation every time something like this happens. Um, it's really frustrating, especially people who should fucking know better. Um, you know, and then we have people cheering on Biden like he's doing this great, magical, wonderful thing, which, you know, I get that on the surface it may look that way. I'm not at all convinced that this dude is actually going to pull out, out of Afghanistan or not just going to privatize the damn war. Um, oh, yeah, you know. that's that's literally what's ha- it, it's so yeah. funny to me when um when I see people like Kyle Kalinske and then Trump Republicans who were very and justifiably critical of Obama because he did the whole thing of George W. Bush wanted troops on the ground. Obama wanted drones and private contractors. Then Trump wanted troops on the ground. Now Biden's going back to drones and private contractors. Mm -hmm. And I know this firsthand because like I said, the the kind of communities I run around in, it's a lot of the gun community, the ex-military community. The rates for private military contractors for deployments to Afghanistan have skyrocketed in the last 48 hours. All sorts of positions, all sorts of jobs, paying up to like 100,000 a year. And they're going to surge private military contractors in there. And it's just going to be what it was under Obama. There's probably gonna be some token embassy force and some Marines hanging out at the airport. And then there's gonna be a bunch of special operations and and contractors crawling all over over the country while we drone strike the nebulous terrorist threat. And even in his speech, which is surreal, I'm so happy a lot of people picked up on this. He was like, well, we're drawing down in Afghanistan, but we're going to focus on counterterrorism, particularly in Africa. And it's like, Mm -hmm. he said the quiet part out loud, people. This is not an end of the war. This is a change of theater. Like, they want to just take this shit and move it to Ethiopia, move to Somalia, like... And we just talked to Danny (laughs) Scherzen about this, like, three weeks ago, um, you know, about how this is really just like a... 
reimagining of the war. It's like a repackaging of what it is. Um, and we've also talked to Danny about AFRICOM and how, it, it, I mean, all of this stuff is interconnected. And I wish that more people were able to um, see those connections because it's very often that, I mean, uh, I don't remember what, why we were talking about it, but it's like people find, like look at these issues in a vacuum, like these things happen, like they're all just like their own little thing. And it's not, that's not, all of this stuff is interconnected. I and wanna we, read that line from Biden's remarks because it's really telling, like Magnus said. Did you find it? Do you have it up? I'm about to find it. <laughs> and I love that like uh, everybody, like Crystal Ball, for example, I said this before we started recording, but Crystal Ball said um, that this was like the most honest foreign policy speech that she's ever heard from a, a president in her lifetime. And it's filled with riddled with lies. Like it's riddled with lies. You know, he, this isn't about, we were never supposed to be there for nation building. Well, there's a video from 2001 where he very specifically says that that's exactly what we're supposed to be going there for. Right. And, and it's like, like uh, us, us on the non-interventionalist side, we also want them to stop the anti terror campaigns because mm -hmm. they create terrorism he said he was going to ramp those up we also know that there's more theaters than afghanistan he mentioned fucking like africa we want that like so no this isn't a win at all i will give very specific and deliberate credit that i think it is important that the american people heard from the president of the united states that we cannot build fucking nations mm -hmm. i'll give him credit on that that's fine to put that loud and clear to these people of like no this was never going to work this was stupid. This was fine. Even though it comes hollow from Joe Biden, mm -hmm. I'm at least glad that someone important in front of millions of people said that. But past that, garbage. The whole thing is garbage. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, it really is. So a few things here. Today, the terrorist threat has metastasized well beyond Afghanistan. Al-Shabaab in Somalia, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, Al-Nusra in Syria, ISIS attempting to create a caliphate in Syria and Iraq and establishing affiliates in multiple countries in Africa and Asia. These threats warrant our attention and our resources. And then this next part is key. We conduct effective counterterrorism missions against terrorist groups in multiple countries where we don't have a permanent military presence. If necessary, we will do the same in Afghanistan We've developed counterterrorism over the horizon capability, that's the new buzzword, that will allow us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on any direct threats to the United States in the region and to act quickly and decisively if needed. But the crux there is we conduct effective counterterrorism missions against terrorist groups in multiple countries where we don't have a permanent military presence. So what he's admitting there is that we are waging warfare illegally. That's what it boils down to. And there's a lot of him coming out and saying what we've known for so long in his remarks. And I encourage everybody who's concerned about what's happening to actually read them because just hearing them uh, isn't enough. Yeah, he, he said exactly what they intend on doing. They're going to mm -hmm. keep they're going to keep up the drone program, the drone program that effectively has caused more terrorism in this fucking world than probably anything else that I could imagine. 90% civilian casualty rate. Like, what do you, <laughs> you Thank know? you, Daniel Hale. Yes, thank, thank you, you Daniel. Daniel Hale. And, and like, yeah, that's their plan. And private military contractors, which like I said, I have friends that do that work. And people do not understand that at all. They do not understand PMCs. They do not understand how they're used or what they're done for. Thankfully, most of my friends just do the security work but they know people in the industry that are doing the same shit the military is doing. They're just paid for it more mm -hmm. and have zero accountability usually. And a lot of it is swept under the rug. Yeah. And then you get into the, the special forces shit. And that's just a, a black hole. The CIA and, and, and like SOCOM and all of them, like, God damn, we will never find out half the shit they're doing over there because when it, when it came out with like Abu Ghabi and shit like that, of like you had Navy SEALs running around like grabbing people's kids and like family and stuff to like get information out of them and like all the leaks out of that. And it's like, that's still going to happen. And that's Thank you, causing, Julian. Yeah, that's, what, <laughs> that's what's causing the problem. Like, honestly, I really do feel like the average Afghani doesn't really give a fuck about the regular military forces because the Marines are just standing in the, in the desert, sweating their ass off handing out candy bars and wandering around. Like, that's not where the problem is. 
Like, I feel like their biggest issue is with the special forces and the contractors and the drones running around just indiscriminately killing people, you know? That's, yeah. That's the problem. Not the fucking dudes sitting in the desert doing nothing in a fucking Humvee. That's, they probably don't even care about that. It's the drone strike that kills their grandma or the special forces people that break into their house and, and kidnap them because they look like someone else or so any of the other hundred fuck ups we've done. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> unbelievable but you still have people pretending that um you know like we didn't uh create and fund all of the groups that jesse just named like biden's like oh there's all this terror well you fucking created it i don't i don't know why we can't get people to understand or recognize that that's the case um you know people will still deny that we uh were involved in you know creating funding arming training most of these groups um, and it, our actions are, it's, you know, people try to pretend like it's about our safety or that we're protecting, protecting national security. It does nothing but make us more unsafe. It does nothing but piss. I mean, if you go and you blow up somebody's country and kill their, you know, kids, I'm pretty sure they're going to be mad about that. And that's, you know, it, it's, it's really bizarre to me that grown ass adults don't understand that that's going to cause more terrorism. That's going to cause more problems. That's going to cause more, you know, it's, it, I'm, it's just really frustrating. And it's, and being of the left, watching people on the left fall for the same shit over Kyle. and over and over again. Kyle. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Kyle. I don't, Biden I don't consider, bro. Yeah. He's Biden not on the left bro. though. He's, he's not, and he, he, people get mad at me when I say that, that he's not on the left. He will openly admit that he's not really of the left. He is like a milk toast centrist. Um, he always has been, he is not in, in any way bold or um progressive or he's he's you know he's a centrist he's like and, the opposite opposite side of the coin to tim pool to me you now essentially yeah like like yeah. that's like that's like the the duopoly of, of youtube right there of of milk toast centrism that's fair i think that's a good comparison actually yeah but yes the, the, the these leftists who are you know, we have Marianne Williamson claiming it's about women's rights, which we talked about with Danny Scherzen when we had him on a few weeks ago. That was one of the things that we discussed is how they always try to claim that it's about protecting the women and children. And do you really think that killing the husbands and brothers and fathers of the women and children um, is protecting them or helping them in any way? Do you really think that blowing up their communities is helpful in any way or making them any safer? Um, and look, the you, you look at all of these like Afghani women that have come out over the last week to preach essentially empire and going back in and not leaving and anything. And you can just click on their bio and it's like th all of them are now part of extremely wealthy NGOs mm -hmm. that exclusively advise the US military and US contractors and shit like that over there. So it's like, okay, it's the machine. Like these women, these, we uplifted these women by essentially shoving them into the giant hydra of the CIA essentially. <laughs> like, great, you know? <laughs> And that's always the case. I mean, we see it um, with Cuba. Like with there, a bunch of Cubans will pop up and be like, yeah, it's so terrible. And it's like people who live in Miami are and are wealthy. And, who, you know, it's and it's like that every single time, every single time. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of think tank heads coming out under the R2P doctrine and suddenly claiming that they care about Afghanistan and human rights. Well, where were you for the past 20 years? <laughs> Right. Where, now, why, why now it's now it's fashionable. Us? Now it's fashionable to just discuss Afghanistan, just like when Israel once again is bombing Gaza. You have people come out of the woodwork like they've cared about Palestine and Palestinians for a long time, and they have something productive to contribute to the conversation. Oh yeah, and, and that, that that like, you know, just to bring it back to the first show that I, we ever did together when I came on here and I told you about how they were trying to paint us as a terrorist organization because of the Hamas thing in Minneapolis. Boy, did we call it that a lot of those same people when that was going down came out of the woodwork and were free Palestine, free Palestine. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. a couple months ago, you were, you were writing an article calling Hamas a terrorist organization and saying they were in Minneapolis working with far right extremists. Like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like right. And a huge, <laughs> a huge part of it is that they don't study history. They don't read history. They have no historical context for what's going on in Afghanistan. For example, what happened to the British military there in the 1840s? and 1850s what happened to the soviets in 1980 robert fisk was at bagram air base to listen to a soviet general 
give a press conference and explain the situation at that point. And he said that, I'm paraphrasing, this is the general, he said that right now we're just dealing with a few extremist elements in the mountains and that's our only only problem right now. And look what happened then. It was eight more years or so of war for the Soviets. And in 2001, Fisk said he was at Bagram Air Base yet again. And the, an American general this time said, we're just dealing with a few extremist elements in the mountains. And he said to himself, dear God, I know what comes next. And it did. This time it was 20 years instead of eight years. So there's a lot more history than that, obviously, but these and even people- out, Even outside of the history, like the terrain, the geography, the right. idea that Afghani nationalism exists, like it, it doesn't. Like there's no such thing as Afghan nationalism. They do not view their country that way. They don't care what little squiggles on a map that the fucking English did back in the 1800s to divide their country up. They don't recognize those. And, and people are so confused and like, oh, we're dealing with some extremists in the mountains. Well, it's like, okay, the entire country is, is mountains for one. <laughs> and everyone in the mountains hate you. So the, everyone in the mountains are extremists. So congratulations, the entire country hates you. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Right? Like, and it's like, we, of course we're like, of course they're extremists again. If you blow up their country and destroy their communities and murder their children, they're gonna be pissed. It, it's duh. Especially because like, obviously a lot of these people aren't as, I don't, I don't, wouldn't know the proper word for it, but like third world as we think they are, like a lot of them have computers and cell phones and blah, blah, blah. But also a lot of them don't. So they don't even have the context of what's going on. One day right. they were out in their rural as fucking nowhere doing their thing in their village. And then some people with this weird red, white, and blue flag showed up and started shooting people. They don't know why they're here. They don't care why they're here. And you raping know? their women. Like right. it, we pretend like we're protecting their women. And there's a huge rape epidemic in the military. And not oh, yeah. just in within like our within the military itself, because there is that problem too. Um, but you know, it, when we go to Afghanistan or Iraq or Iran or wherever we're going, um, there's a huge epidemic of the, the locals being raped and tortured and beaten and murdered. Including children. And, yes. Yeah, that, Danny, Danny Scherzen told us about the the parties the warlords would host mm-hmm. i forget the exact name of the parties at this point but they oh, would they would round up adolescent boys get them high on hash then dress them up as adolescent girls and then have a rape party with them and these were warlords that the us was working with and propping up in the name of talking to the locals as we've heard so much so afghans who live in villages where this is happening they know damn well what's happening they see it and it's flagrant evidence it's right in their faces that the u.s does not and has never cared about them or the stability of afghanistan and all of these people coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden to say things like well a tenuous and imperfect stability which is what biden is supposed to be bringing to afghanistan is a better path for us to travel than to abandon the country to the genocidal chaos of the taliban and of our, of our people <laughs> of our, our creation right right and you want to grab them and scream in their faces. What the hell are you talking about? But you take a step back and realize that, again, they have no historical context. They don't really know what they're talking about. And they're thoroughly propagandized. Holy yeah, shit. They're putting out talking points that, again, suit the confirmation bias of whichever think tank they happen to be working for. Right. And, and particularly, if you see anyone from the UN or that works for an NGO for the UN, talking about women's rights in, in, in fucking Afghanistan, tell them to go to hell because last, what well, I, I think the number was 18,000 reported rapes in Africa mm-hmm. by UN peacekeepers, blue helmets, shut the fuck up. Like, I do not want your, it's just like when George W. Bush made a statement 
and the entire replies were just full of the gif of, of the oh my god the balls of that <laughs> motherfucker to come out and make some statement like the only thing i want to hear from you is your testimony from the hague um uh in your uh trial for war crimes what that's the that? only thing i want to hear from I want that, that dude. I, I posted about it i want that man shit oh. in, the bucket in a cell for the rest of his life and then after he dies i want his 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 tombstone to be put in the middle of freedom square in washington dc as a public bathroom yes go to hell yes Fuck that about guy. seriously it's amazing to me that in, in liberals and have been rehabilitated too. And yeah, Megan McCain yes. too. Go to oh. fucking hell, Megan McCain. Go oh. to- but my father, I don't give a shit about your war criminal father, bitch. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. He was yeah, a horrible he, person. Deal with he was, it. He was on the way to bomb a civilian light bulb factory when he was shot down in Vietnam. Yeah, he's not real, a hero. A real American he's not, hero. He's a fucking shit stain on humanity. Team Tumor. He, he's he is 90% of the pot problem over there with the Libya shit, which mm-hmm. that breaks my heart because Libya just never gets talked about anymore Yeah, because I think it is like the blackest stain on Obama. So thus anyone who's trying to like rehabilitate that part of like the American history does not want to talk about Libya, but John McCain standing there taking photos with fucking people that ended up going to Syria with Libyan military equipment and get starting the fucking civil war in Syria which led to everything in the Northeast, which led to everything in Turkey, which led to more shit in Iran, which led to more shit in fucking Yemen. It's like, your dad has blood on his hands. Shut Lots. The fuck up. Lots. <laughs> He's like and, bathing and, in it. <laughs> and, and Obama and Hillary Clinton and all of you fucking people, shut up. I do not want your opinion. This is your fault. You created this. While you share tearful fucking videos of Afghanis desperately trying to climb on fucking planes to escape the monsters you created. That is right. your fault. You deserve to rot in a cell for the rest of your fucking life for that. Brought slavery like, that's back the to the best world. Thing. Like, yeah, that's the ugh. best thing they deserve is to rot in a cell. Like that, that's like the best case scenario for them. Yep. These are like the worst people on planet earth. They've created these problems. They've caused unimaginable um, amounts of chaos and destruction and death. And then they want to like pop up and give statements about what their feelings are on the, the problem that they cause and like pretend like they give a shit. Fuck off. I'm so sick of that. And liberals rehabilitated that motherfucker. Like he's like part of the resistance now. Like he's, oh, look, he's so cute. Passing Michelle Obama some candy. He's a fucking war criminal. And again, it's people like, people from the DSA taking pictures with Michelle Obama and fucking rehabilitating John McCain. Oh, Turn the around, DSA. Turn, turning around, <laughs> calling me a Nazi when I have pictures of John McCain standing on stage with Ole Tommy Brook, who said that we need to cleanse Ukraine of the Pole and Jewish menace yeah. and fucking flies around Hitler saluting with a goddamn swastika flag. John McCain's on stage with him. The fucking Secretary of State over under Obama is talking to him. We gave him money. We gave them weapons. Shut up. <laughs> I still think it's funny when people get mad at me for talking to you, being friends with you, all of that stuff. It, it, most of them, like 98% of them voted for Joe Biden. They're like, oh, but he's a fascist. You voted for a fucking fascist. First of all, Magnus is not a fascist. But second of all, you voted for a fascist. You and don't have get very, to talk to me about that. I have a very relevant thing that happened just this morning in regards to this. So, uh, not to get too far off the topic, but I think this is important for people to understand not to trust these fucking people. So they're in Atlanta. They are trying to cut down 200 acres of old growth forest to build a LARPing city for the police to go around and train urban warfare. Jesus. Yes. So there was a protest. Some of my guys showed up because, Hey, we don't like that. It was perfectly fine. They posed for pictures. Nobody there had a problem with it. They were just chill and cool. This morning, I wake up to a, what was like, uh, Southern Georgia right-wing watch post or something like that of like, these people showed up to your spaces and blah, blah, blah. Never let them. Here's all this fucking shit from Bellingcat about how they're (laughs) evil and blah, 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 and all this shit. And then they're like, I will be writing an article about this later with my partners from the DSA Georgia. Now, Misty, I'll have an alley-oop for you. What organization almost unanimously voted to extremely fund the police a couple of weeks ago? Ooh, gee, let me think. Might it have been the squad and the Democrats? Yeah, what, what, in that bill, there was federal funding for police and riot cop training. Mm-hmm. So where did the money to build this or build this facility come from? the organization that you're working with to protest it. 
And one has to ask what the long game is of funding and carrying out these trainings because they're not just done for the sake of doing them. The elites behind them always have a plan, always have a long game in mind. So what are they anticipating? What are they expecting? And it's not conspiratorial to ask that. They're planning for, they want a civil war. I've been saying this for a long time. They would much rather have a civil war because that means they get to avoid the class war. Yeah. Um, and that's, they've been facilitating that for a long ass time. That's what all of the propaganda and divisions about. That's why they try to, um, you know, uh, the whole, all of the black lives matter and all the white supremacy. And that's why that's so blown up. And that's why that's, I mean, it's being used. It's an, it's again, it's one of those emotionally driven issues. And that's not to say that there isn't racism and that there isn't white supremacy and that that's not a problem, but it's being used because it's an emotionally driven issue to divide the people. Because yeah, if no. we're all fighting amongst ourselves, we're not paying attention to who the real enemy is. Yeah. And the, the, the reason, they're selling it as that the United States police forces broadly across the entire country had poor response to the riots and protests over the last year. As everyone knows, anywhere that it got bad, it's because they effectively let it get bad or incentivized it to get bad. And anywhere they decided that they didn't want it to happen, they didn't have any issues shutting it down. Anyone who got tear gassed, arrested, kettled, fucking the police did not struggle with pulling that out. Okay. It's usually the cops making it bad. It's, yeah. you know, it, you so know, why are they, so why are they building the, they're like, Oh, we had a poor response to it. And it's like, what's your mm -hmm. definition of poor response? Cause I, you know, I saw very different things, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, it's no, it's like the Capitol. It's the, it, that it, people still who think that that was like an insurrection, they were fucking let in the building. The doors were open. Like they were taking selfies with the cops. We were there two days before that at a Julian Assange protest. And there were like 50 protesters and 50 fucking cops. And then on January 6th, when everybody knows, everybody knows that Donald Trump is holding this rally, all of a sudden there's no cops to be found. And that you don't find that suspicious at all. Come on. Yeah. And, and I then, mean, all, all the comparisons between the Taliban and January 6th and, mm -hmm. and call, saying the fall of Kabul is, is their version of January. Oh my God. Oh. It was literally, I was, I could not stop tagging Reed. I'm like, Reed, these are all Reed Coverdale tweets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's like, like your, sar your, your sarcastic shit posting. I love his shit posting. <laughs> it's the best. So good. What a <laughs> fatuous comparison. Yes. It would it would be funny if it weren't so dangerous, if the implications of it weren't so dangerous. And if so yeah, many people had, didn't had, fall for it. God damn it. A Co you had Colbert on last night being like, of course we need to pull out of Afghanistan. We don't need to fight the Taliban. We have we have a, a war that we need to fight here or something oh, like that. He did not. Like, oh yes, my I, god. I, you can go to my I think it's like the third to last thing I tweeted he literally was just like that's not the exact quote but it was along that lines of like we have a war to fight here it's like damn talk about saying the quiet part out loud I told you they want the, they've been facilitating a civil war I've been trying to tell people I mean I get called a conspiracy theorist or that I'm racist and I just don't care about white supremacy I f a fucking course I care about it it's being used against us that's the problem it's it, it, and this is not like it's not like this is a new thing that they do this is they've always done this look how they, every every single white supremacist organization in the last 30 40 years at the end of the day came out that like half of them were fucking FBI agents yes okay? <laughs> They go, they go to some rural town, they find some racist idiots that probably have like te room temperature IQ. They give them a bunch of money and equipment and organize them and put on protests and training and shit. Get them to do something stupid and arrest them. This is almost every single- You're one. absolutely right. You're <laughs> absolutely right. And it's still <laughs> regarded as impolite to say the least to question the role of the FBI in what happened on January 6th. And Glenn Greenwald, is one of the lone voices who's written about this. And he cites the case of the governor of Michigan, I yeah. believe it was. I've and, been talking about that a lot. And, a lot the, and the so-called plot against her. And he deconstructs the whole thing and shows how the FBI created it. And were it not for the FBI, nothing would have ever taken place. Well, there's and like what, six dudes involved and then 12 FBI agents? It's 14 right. now. 
Yeah, that's what, and that's used against Magnus and the Boogaloo Boys all the time because yeah. there's some affiliation, like there's some. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know like how deep it is, but I mean that's yeah, used it's, against it's y'all like a, all the time. A, tan, a tangential like connection. Yeah. Between it, like people knew people, people were around people, people were in chats with each other, whatever. But like, yeah, that that's the thing too. It and just uh yesterday more came out from the Ann Arbor News because what's going on right now is the defense is like, show us the text messages between the informants. And the agents and and the defense, like the the victims of this, I guess you would say, the accused, whatever. And they're every single time the state is like, and the prosecuting attorney is like, oh, th- that's not relevant. And then a little more leaks out, and then that's where we found out of like, oh, they had the training at the FBI agent's house, and the FBI agent brought them all together, and the FBI agent came up with a plan. The most recent one is particularly awful because it shows text me- uh, text messages between the special agent and one of the informants. Tell, and one of the informants is like, I think they're on to me. I think they know I'm an FBI agent. Well, FBI informant. And the agent tells him to fed jacket a fucking innocent person and accuse him of being a fed to cover his thing. It was like an innocent guy on the sidelines. So here's an FBI agent telling an informant in a quote unquote, dang, from their perspective, dangerous right wing militia group that wants to kill people to accuse an innocent person of being an FBI informant and provide material and resources to fake prove this man was a Fed. Jesus. And this isn't something new. If we go back to what <laughs> happened to Randy Weaver and how he mm. was set up by the FBI with a sawed off shotgun of all things, all crazy, insane, dangerous things, which they then used as justification to essentially murder half of his family, yes. including his wife, as she was holding their baby child so you can't you can't even you can't even talk about that because you get immediately labeled as a fucking nazi like it's so uh jesse here it comes you get to be a nazi with me it's so people can people can say what say what they want about that but those people the only thing they know about what went down with the weaver family is completely wrong the only thing they'll put out there is that he was a white supremacist. He wasn't a white supremacist. He was a white separatist. And that might seem like that's not something I agree with. Not not different. That might it might seem like there's no difference between somebody who's a white separatist and somebody who's a white supremacist. But Randy Weaver and his family, they and I'm not condoning white separatism, but they wanted to live in isolation, which is why they moved to Ruby Ridge, Idaho. And they didn't want to socialize, associate, be in the milieu with people who weren't white. And by all accounts, Randy Weaver, when he was going to meetings that did include white supremacists, he was seeing what it was all about. And again, that's not condoning his decisions or right. and like the, the, the ideologies thing, of any of right. those people. But it's simply to say that does not justify this federal this internal federal body of war essentially coming in and murdering half his family right and that's that's the important thing is like you know you just th- throw randy weaver aside i don't even care like put him in a bin his wife didn't do shit his wife right. wasn't anything that was just his wife his 14 year old kid didn't do shit his fucking dog didn't do shit like you know? she was holding and, an infant and like mind an you infant. they shot his son sammy in the back as he was running away Yep. So there's the brave U.S. Marshal Service and FBI. For Some you. things never change. Yes. Well, the <laughs> FBI. I mean, l- I mean, listen. I, everybody knows I love Julian Assange, and but look what the, look what the FBI did to Julian Assange. They gave immunity to a convicted pedophile, a convicted child molester who's like a career criminal and a like a diagnosed sociopath, like one uh, just who, uh, by the way, um, uh, embezzled over fifty thousand dollars from WikiLeaks and was convicted of that in Iceland. And they gave this dude immunity to completely fabricate a case against Julian Assange. Right. This that, isn't new. That that fucking that page from this morning, the DSA shit lib fucking page that wrote that whole article about my friend not wanting a, a police black site to be built in Georgia. God forbid. Uh, they, they, one of the things they reference is the flag we have, which is, has like the names of all of the victims of like, like people from Daniel Shaver all the way down to uh, Kelly. What's his name? Uh, fuck, I'm forgetting his first name. The, the homeless man that was beaten to death. Oh, uh, mm, is I, it I'm forgetting. David? I'm so but bad at names. It's, it's something Kelly, but uh, yeah. yeah, like we have like everybody on there, but also we have, we have 
we don't even have Randy Weaver. We just have Vicky Weaver and his son on that flag. So it's not even about Randy Weaver. And then we have the victims of Waco. And they put like, oh, see, they're far right extremists because they support uh, pedophile far right separatists, oh David Koresh. And I'm like, so fuck all the kids that died then, right? It's David not about Koresh. David Koresh. He it's not about far right. Him. He wasn't no, that's far what I mean. right. That's what they he was about. a pedophile, though. I mean, he did have child brides, and that's not, I mean, that's you know, right. not good. Um, right. But it's not about him. It, it, I mean, he it was a cult David leader. Koresh. Yeah, it didn't say David Koresh. It said the victims of Waco yeah. on the flag. And yeah, I mean, he, women and children and old people burned to death in that fucking basement. Like, shut up. And yeah, it's just because so, they were manipulated by a cult leader. I mean, that, they don't deserve to die for that. It's crazy. So if you're against mourning and remembering the victims of Waco, then you're, you're in support of the ideology free for all of the ATF to come in and destroy your home or destroy anybody's home um, under the auspices of protecting children when we know goddamn well, they don't care about protecting children Clearly. Because, because it was, it was, a year or so before that when they murdered Sammy Weaver and but you're not allowed to talk about that because like you both said if you do show any sympathy if you do try to look at it in any sort of truthful light people will immediately say oh you support David Koresh and what he did and they don't allow any room to make the nuanced distinctions that are absolutely necessary when discussing things like that. Because yeah, like, again, like it's not about David Koresh. Of, yeah, the awkward details of David Koresh went for like a four mile run every morning away from the compound. He could have been grabbed at any point mm-hmm. and said they wanted a big siege for the camera. It was named Operation Showtime. They brought the news there in advance. Fucking David Chipman, who is our ATF director now, say uh making up lies that the branch davidian shot down helicopters with 50 caliber sniper rifles that's our fucking atf director have fun guys like mm. yeah and and they would wage they waged psyops for the 51 days there as well against these um against the people who were trapped in the compound they would play over loudspeakers the sound for example of rabbits being slaughtered 24 hours round the clock uh essentially torturing these people psychologically to come out yeah, everybody and- forgets the banner saying we want the press and there was actually people on the ground that wanted to go in and interview them and the fucking atf wouldn't let them do it <laughs> they didn't want their side of the story to come out yeah and but it's very similar many- to afghanistan though actually it's all about we got to protect the women and children <laughs> and yeah. i don't know how many people remember not to stick to waco because i know there are other things to talk about but People, after a while, were coming to spectate, in a sense. They could watch from the road from a distance what was happening each day. And one of the people who was there often was Timothy Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh. Bill Hicks was also there. Um, You can find video footage of that on YouTube very easily. But does that mean Bill Hicks supported David Koresh or that he was of the same ideology as Timothy McVeigh? No, but... And the fucking, it, like, the, the move bombings. Like, there's, like, hundreds of examples right. of this where it's, like, like, it's just, it, it, it drives me up a wall, and I, I don't even know. It's obvious these people are shit libs to, like, extreme, because they don't know what's going on, and they're just being told. And God forbid you ever tag the, the DSA in anything. Oh, my God. Like, the DSA. Like, at a police brutality <sighs> event, like, just, oh, my God. I got in a fight with somebody from the DSA the other day who was like, uh, <laughs> what's the funniest we have ever seen? Uh, he was all mad at me because uh, something about Julian Assange, but then he was like, well, if you'll excuse me, I have important DSA shit to do. Like in all seriousness, I died. I died. I'm like, this is seriously one of the funniest tweets I've ever seen on Twitter. And that's right. saying something. And I, I, I said something. this, I said this last night when I went on my friend Matt's <laughs> show, um, when it comes to the end of damn war stuff, I do plan on keeping this as an organization that's going to go forward. I want to do more events in the in the future and everything. I have made a promise and I'm going to hold myself to this. I will accept zero money, zero support. I will not endorse or be endorsed by any fucking political party. If you want to show up, you want to host an event, 
that's fine. The DSA, the Republicans, they want to show up, but no, it will never become one of these fucking parasitic vestigial bullshit propaganda arms of one of these parties because that's what happens with every single one of these i really do believe the assange movement's probably the only one i can think of that hasn't had this happen but like the the tea party the militia movement like uh, like the anti-lockdown stuff every single time the republicans the democrats the dsa like they, they like they'll come in and take these over and claim mm-hmm. ownership of it black lives matter another golden example of that they'll come in and they'll just ruin it and it's like, no, don't don't let these people near your shit, period. I think the Assange movement has the benefit of like, we we, we can't help but understand that none of those people are friends. <laughs> you know, why, they, they're I all trying to kill that. Julian Assange. They're, it's, they're all trying to kill him. So, and I, I'm just a, from A for A, I can't speak for all Assange groups, but that was like a very um, purposeful thought when we, when they started it, I I didn't start it, but like Andrew and Taylor, and I guess Steve kind of towards the beginning and Christy, who we kind of lost to the information war, but um, like, that was a very purposeful thought was we're, it's going to be decentralized. We're not going, it's going to be post-partisan. We, we don't care what party you're involved in. We don't care who you vote for. We don't care what you think about anything else. If you are willing to fight for Julian Assange, press freedom and free speech, welcome aboard. And that's, we've tried to stick to that as much as humanly possible. And I, I mean, I don't know how anybody um, can't understand why that's important. If you care about something, you should be willing to fight for it with anybody. I mean, this is shit that I actually care about. Like, I want to get it done. Right. Uh, and and, that, and so I don't care. <laughs> that, and that's the thing that, that pissed me off so much about the Atlanta Police Training Center is they, so they, don't, they don't understand that by doing this, by protecting their spaces, quote unquote, as they put it, um, that they make it to where nobody knows about this shit. Because mm-hmm. obviously this was probably like a hot button, super like political issue within the DSA and within like the like the local anti-fascists and everything. But because one of my guys was local and saw a flyer about it, he was able to find their page, which was then able to share it out. And I was able to get that in front of Spike Cohen, who raised awareness about it. I was able to get that in front of some Liberty Republicans who were in that area. They're like, yo, this is bullshit. Like, why are we spending money on this? And, and, it was able to get out to so many more eyeballs and so many ears. And then they come around and see this happening and see people that are outside of the DSA, outside of their little bubble coming to support them from that. And they run a block bot and make scathing articles about everyone who showed up to support them. And it's like, it's amazing. Shit, shit you- like that makes me <sighs> conspiratorial, bro. Like shit like that makes me conspiratorial. Like I'm Do like, they even are care? you just like, stupid I'm, I'm- or like, I is wonder it, that all the time. Do you actually, do they actually want to get anything done? Because I don't, I honestly don't think that they do. Um, I think that a lot of these people are more concerned about like uh, feeling morally superior somehow um, than actually getting, achieving any of their goals. It's like the Medicare for all marches when that all blew up and everybody was freaking out. Like, uh, you know. I said, we can't it, even touch it, on the Medicare for all marches because this will turn into an episode of bitch. I was sitting on the <laughs> sidelines watching that all go down. I was like, oh my oh, God. Fuck. And you know what's funny, Magnus? <laughs> I thought when I, when they approached me and they were like, uh, Hey, will you, uh, MC this event? First of all, I was like, you know what you're getting into, right? Cause a lot of people are going to be really mad that I'm involved in this. And they're like, we don't care. And I'm like, okay, cool. But in my very naive brain, which I don't, I'm usually not very naive, but I thought being an Assange activist, that's hard. Like it's really hard to, there's a lot of shit you have to deal with. There's a lot of propaganda you have to fight against. And I thought, this is going to be awesome. Like, this is going to be easy. Everybody wants Medicare for all. Like this is going to be so Oh, was I wrong? <laughs> Fucking flaming dump su- dumpster Jesus. fire on a crashing airplane that hit a train wreck. Like, whole- <gasps> unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Like uh, a majority of Americans want this thing. 80 some percent of Democrats, like 50 some odd percent of Republicans want Medicare for all. And it was still a fucking shit show. And it was intentionally a shit show. It was intentionally sabotage um, by people who claim to be progressive and they claim to be, no, these people are not your friends. Those are some of the most dangerous people um, that we're dealing with right now. I, in my opinion, is like the white moderates. I mean, we saw it last night with Jen Perlman. I don't even want to get into it, but Jesus fucking Christ. Um, these people I just are saw not, bits and pieces of that. And I was it like, was I ain't touching unbelievably it. bad. It. It. Oh my God, dude. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to get into it just a little bit because it really did it, like my jaw fucking dropped. I wasn't going to watch it because I can't stand Jen Perlman. But, but it's important to discuss people like her because she's of the same ilk as 
the yes. people we were talking about earlier as pertains yeah. to Afghanistan. Yeah, the, this, this, this might seem off topic, but, but talking no, about it is, the, it, the, the fishnet people that pre yes. prevent people from getting to the fucking issue because they think that they're fighting, but they get caught in this net and never accomplish anything. Yeah. This applies so, to all Jen, this shit. Jen, uh, well, not Jen, because uh, she doesn't run her own social media. Her partner or her co-host or whatever Peter does, which he's a giant douche canoe. Um, but they, so she, they asked Fred Hampton leftists to come on um, to talk about unifying the left, right? And so they have them oh, on, no. and they're, <laughs> I know, right? And so they're talk, they, like they're talking, and like Jay is pushing back. Compton Jay, CJ, um, who is amazing. I love him. You should be watching his show. Um, and if anyone, if anyone on, and they were. And you know, Jay was pushing back on this whole we have to work within the Democratic Party, we have to be nice to progressives, we have to, you know, oh, we have to, we can't, we can't say anything bad about Nina because then you're sabotaging her campaign as if that's on us and not on her. Um, but so, and Jay was pushing back and he was pushing back in, in a very, um, you know, he was like loud and passionate because this is, this is stuff that affects black people, y'all. I mean, they can't, black, and I, I know I'm white, I shouldn't even be talking about it because it's not my thing, but um, I have no like experience, but it, it, it frustrates me because these progressives talk out of both sides of their mouth. They pretend to care about black people and black issues, but when it comes down to it, they're not willing to put any of the actual work in to um, make anything better. And that's exactly what Jen was talking, like, they, you know, well, we had to work within the Democratic Party. And Jay's like, fuck you. We don't have time for incrementalism. Like his, his cousin was murdered. He told all, like told this story. And Jen is so fucking dismissive. She's like, oh, well, you have your platform where you can talk about that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This dude just told you that his cousin was murdered. And you're like, the, the condescension and just the oh, so why so invite then, him on why invite him on if i don't know but to tell him to go back to his own platform here's the part that really really pissed me off um so jay like goes off and he tells the story about his cousin being murdered and how you know black people can't afford to wait for the democratic party and for incrementalism and for reform um and so peter then says um, you know, and it, 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 you should, everybody, I highly recommend you go watch it because you can tell in like the split second before he says this out loud, he's like questioning his entire life and every decision he's ever made. Um, and he knows what's about to come out of his mouth is bullshit, but he says it anyway. And he's like, well, um, you know, uh, we totally support reparations reparations wasn't even being talked about this and and so jay was like Buzzword. don't fucking pander to me yeah jay, literally jay like called, searching his brain like a google yes, fucking yes. bar for but something jay called him say. the fuck out and he was like don't pander to me to my face are you fucking kidding me don't pander to me and yeah, jay doesn't take them. Any of that shit that was yes great. No, and and they booted him. They kicked him off. Him and Vini both. They kicked him off the stream. Like, oh. oh, way to be a good ally. The black man's trying to tell you, um, from his experience, what his community needs and why this isn't working. And then you insult his intelligence by pandering to him with reparations, and then kick him off the stream. Oh, holy fuck shit! You, fuck it. And that's the thing is like like across across every issue and spectrum. Reform would be a legit thing and incrementalism would be a legit thing if that was happening uh, at all over the last 20 years right. or now, you know? So that's why you got people, so many people that are revolutionaries because we've tried so many angles of doing, of playing that shit, of doing that shit. And it's gone nowhere. It's gone Bernie nowhere. Bernie Sanders was my last, um, like uh, the last thing for me, like I, I didn't think that he was going to be like a big game changer or anything like that. I knew who he was, but I thought maybe this will be a chance for us to swing it back um, just enough so that we don't go over the cliff. And when he fucked everybody over, I was done. That was if I was, I've never been an electoral politics person. Um, I, I voted for Barack Obama in 2008, which I regret with every fiber of my being. And I hate myself for it. Um, I voted third party in 2012, just as kind of a fuck you. Um, I voted for Bernie in the primaries and then voted third party, but I'm done with electoral politics. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And Bernie's been reforming the party for five years. They just elected Joe fucking by Captain Crime Bill. They just elected yeah, Captain Crime. Bill Rap during rapidly, Black Lives Matter protests. Rapidly expanded the police. Rapidly yes. funded the police. Yes. Fucking, they're oh. worse now than they've ever been. You're failing. You failed. You're not reforming shit, y'all. Not a you're damn actually, thing. You're actually like you're actually like a reverse acceleration. Yes. Like you're like make, <laughs> you're making it go the other direction. Hundred percent. Jesus and like, Christ. And like for like all of this, it breaks my heart because I was at this this protest. And I got to see this firsthand and it, it just goes to show how much we've just fucking failed as a country and as a political movement and everything in every direction of in 2015, it came out by the guardian fucking all like everything like that, that Chicago was running a black site 
in at Hammon Square and they were torturing activists. So a bunch of people had a protest and I put, I keep posting pictures from this, but one of the, the greatest images from that is there's a guy standing there with an Oath Keeper hat in front of an anti-fascist flag. And then there's another picture of BLM activists talking to fucking people from InfoWars about how bad this was. And you had people with Libertarian Party shirts running around with the local like communist organization. They were all at this event, all at this event. That was 2015. Flash forward to 2021 and, and three of my guys show up to another black site essentially <laughs> protest and there's giant scathing Twitter articles about how unacceptable this was. And it's like, it's ridiculous because they're, they're playing hungry hippos and they're gathering up all the activists into these camps and then attacking anyone from outside of that camp. So it's just becoming divided more and more and then not doing anything and then gatekeeping change. And like, it's like, You're it makes- gatekeeping conversations. Like it I makes can't a man even talk to somebody. It makes a man fucking conspiratorial. Like I don't yeah. like to like fly into like crazy interdimensional space elf shit. I don't think that's conspiratorial, shit, But it makes me conspiratorial. It's I don't like, think oh. that's, I think that they've always done this. They've always sought to divide. That's how they keep power. If they keep everybody divided and hating each other, then we're not going to work together to deal with, the, like I said, the real enemy. My enemy is not my neighbor. I say this all the time. My enemy wears a $5,000 suit and sits in a boardroom. I, we can have our disagreements. Of course, I don't like racists. Of course, I, I mean, yes, of course. But we can't even have legitimate conversations about those issues until we deal with the system that's killing us, that it's killing all of us. And so we need to deal with that first. Nothing else. I mean, I, I get in trouble when I say this, but nothing else really matters until we do that. And again, I'm not saying that racism and religion and abortion and all of these issues that we're all fighting about. I'm not saying that doesn't matter. I'm saying it doesn't matter until we actually have a functioning system in which to have those conversations and deal with those things on like a real level. We can't do that now. We cannot do that right now. And there's like, there's real neo-Nazi groups that are growing in this mm -hmm. country. Fucking Patriot Front. I just learned there's a chapter like 13 miles away from me. They jumped my shit on Twitter. One of them was called himself, I know where you live. Oh. Like, like, and these people were dogpiling me and fucking like, like, you know, if you don't know anything about Patriot Front, look into this group. They're all over the country. They have flash protests with hundreds of people. They're well-organized, well-regimented. Nobody in the mainstream news has done an article about it. Nobody's talking about it. The only thing I could find on Google for like on the ground reporting was from a local news fucking outlet in Philadelphia when like a hundred of them showed up on 4th of July to march through the streets yelling reclaim America and reject poison and shit. And I go to all these anti-fascist accounts and nobody's talking about Patriot Front and blah, blah, blah. But goddamn, can they not shut up about people like Ron fucking Paul? Right. I saw that the other day, everybody freaking out about Ron Paul. Like what the hell are you so it, it, again it makes it it's suspicious as shit to me because even that's the home run do you have this actual neo-nazi group all across the country organizing they're public on twitter they put it in their fucking bio and i go to their comments and like nobody's jumping their shit there's no giant threads of oh here i had to do it my dumb neo-nazi magnus had to make a whole thread of like hey look at like these hundreds of accounts that just say patriot front that are sharing a bunch of explicit neo-nazi shit on twitter no, no comments, no quote tweets, no list of who they are, nothing. But can't shut the fuck up about like Yao. Can't shut the fuck up about how you're the Red Brown Alliance shit. Like, oh my god, mm. I'm so sick of hearing about the goddamn Red Bla Brown Alliance. And then again, these are people who mm. legitimately like because I I call them the the Blue Brown Alliance because it's these are people who legitimately vote for like Joe Biden and um you know it, it's y'all aren't like it's not. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm so sick of hearing about the goddamn Red Brown Alliance. It doesn't exist. It's a figment of your imagination. It's just used to scare people away from having conversations with people they don't agree with. And that's exactly what it's intended to do. You have to stay in your box so that they can keep you divided. And I'm so tired of people pretending like we can't have conversations. That's absolutely 100% fucking necessary. It is absolutely fucking necessary to have conversation. How do you expect to get anything accomplished if you're not changing anybody's minds? You have to convince people that your ideas are good and so that they will come on board and then fight for your idea you want to stay in your little fucking bubble and feel like you know smugly superior then you do that i'm going to go and try to have conversations with people and win them over so that i can accomplish the things that i want to get done that seems like common fucking sense to me right and you, you have you have issues where you don't even have to change anybody's mind on shit 
Like if you're an anti-police brutality activist, you can go up to people like fucking Luke Rakowski. You can go up to people like the cop block people. You can go up to people in the Libertarian Party. You can go up to like oath-keeping Republicans that are critical of the police. You can go to all those people and be like, hey, we are critical of the police. We can just do this shit right now. Mm -hmm. You could do that. You know, if you're, if you're like an environmentally conscious fucking person, there's tons of groups that are in the traditional little bubbles you can reach out to. If you're an anti-war person, fuck, you have like the whole political spectrum mm -hmm. where you can find anti-war people and like everything. Fuck, there's anti-war neo-Nazis for fuck's sake. Like, like everyone hates war. You can find these people, you know, but nope, stay in your bubble. Like, like it's, it's wild to me that, that we've become so segregated. And I, I hate the whole our spaces. Cause that's the thing too, is it's like, to use a buzzword, it's like it's like colonizing activism mm -hmm. and making it about shit that the activism is not about, and then gatekeeping everyone out of that fucking activism. And right? curating it too, curating Ooh. through false binaries, like the red brown alliance, for example. It's always one or the other. It's capitalism or socialism. As well, if the, the, I mean, we have our own version: the woke infiltration of, of the libertarian movement. What do you mean? <laughs> Shut the fuck. Because you hear people, because uh, there was a whole thread on Young Americans for Liberty, which is the convention I went to where Ron Paul was at. And like, everybody's like, oh, why would you go to like a conservatarian place? It's like, all I did was run around and pass out flyers to people to fucking show up to my protest. Because I don't give a fuck what these people, and I got argue, got into like a thousand arguments about Ron DeSantis with, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so it's like, uh, that. that's what I was doing there. And, and there was some thread from YAF, which is a Republican organization of like, oh, there was a queer Satanist there and there was all these goofy, weird libertarians and they're trying to normalize homosexuality, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh God. I'm shit on the right. That's, the, that, that's why I love talking to you guys and particularly when we're in the DC because I experienced this all in the LP circles. I watched the fucking Republicans and, and shit do this. And then I obviously see it to a degree with like the, fake dsa biden war that's totally fake but then i talk to you guys and i'm like god damn it's the same shit mm -hmm. it's the same shit. no it really is the same shit it really is the same shit and you know they asked the they asked action for assange to go to that uh, convention that you went to uh, they wanted like 350 bucks just to like have a table i i but i would have totally gone are you fucking kidding me like we can't, uh, A for A can't afford that shit. I mean, it, we don't even accept donations unless we're like see, planning see, an action, see, but. You, you should have showed up anyways. Cause what we did is we just uh, conquered the TP USA booth and yeah, kicked them out. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Because the, all, they, all they did the first day was talk shit about how boring it was because you know, um, if you didn't know anything about TP USA, there's not rampant sexual assault happening at our, at the fucking convention. Right. So that's why the TP USA people were bored. And uh, so, so we just went and we just took down their thing and threw the flag up and took their booth over. Nice. And like, <laughs> so we just could just put the Assange people there. That'd be great. Especially seeming people from fucking turning point, like Mr. Crenshaw and shit like that. I don't have great things to say about Assange. It would have been even more poetic. Right. If that would have happened. But yeah, I would have totally gone. That's not my crowd. That's not, I mean, that's not, but not I would have crowd. totally gone. I would have 100% gone. I'll talk to anybody about Julian Assange. I don't give a fuck. I don't care because it's bigger than that. It's bigger than my ego. It's big. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so tired of people allowing their ego and like their, oh, it's just, you know, it, either you care about something or you don't. Like, this is shit that I, like the anti-war stuff that you're doing. That's stuff that I actually give a shit about. I want to end these wars. It's non-negotiable. Anti-imperialism is non-negotiable. So I don't care if like, you know, people that get mad about Jimmy Dore going on Tucker Carlson. That's fucking awesome. Are you kidding? He has millions of viewers every single night. You would be an idiot to not exploit that to go and, and talk to yeah. people, especially people who don't, you know, maybe would not ordinarily hear that point of view. I mean, Tucker Carlson's audience is not necessarily hearing like an anti-war or a pro Julian Assange message on the regular, on a regular basis. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, Everybody should be doing program that. in the fucking country, like, right? Everybody, on. if you actually give a shit about getting things done, then you should want to hunt. And I don't like Tucker Carlson, but I'm 100% willing to exploit him for his, his platform. 100%. Because I but actually the, give a shit. The main takeaway or the takeaway that so many people have when Jimmy Dore goes on or when Aaron Maté goes on or when Anya Parampil goes on, all of these people who are doing good work, it's never about what they say or the, it's never about what they say. It's about the personality. It's not even about their personality. It's about Tucker, Tucker. Carlson. It's Tucker, Tucker, Tucker. And that says, I think, so much right there. And it goes back to this curating the, 
this pseudo left culture, I think, because it's so much easier to focus on Tucker, Tucker Carlson as a personality or some kind of right wing firebrand or whatever you want to label him as, because it's one of the easiest things you can do instead of actually delving into the issues, which requires work, which requires thought, which requires reading and not just hiding behind your carefully cultivated tweets. And people don't want to do that because you, if you're somebody like Jen Perlman, for example, you're trying to curate and cultivate yourself. And when things get hard, that's when all of what you don't know, that's when your ignorance and your arrogance shows up. And instead of owning that and maybe trying to learn something or improve your knowledge base, you shut people down or you focus on personality. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a rampant problem. And because it's such an easy thing to do and because it's so widespread, so many people default to that. And it's, all, it's always the people that are not there. It's always the people that are not there. Like if, if in some like fantasy universe or whatever, like uh, fucking Tucker Carlson shows up to my event and like is walking around and like talking to people or whatever, a bunch of people that are not running anti-war events that aren't talking about being anti-war, that aren't having protests would be, would flip their shit about mm -hmm. that. And that's kind of the cycle we have in it too. Cause especially with like my experiences with the BLM protests, we never have problem with people on the ground. It, it, I mean, rarely happens when we ever we showed up, whenever we participated, it was always some faceless fucking person on Twitter with 10k followers making a scathing thread, and then they go after everyone who was also on the ground and bully them, and now they don't want like. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. It really it's, is just it's, so annoying. It's fucked because like there's somebody who might be speaking at my event. I can't say who because there's a chance they might back out just because I'm involved with it. I know who you're talking about and I hope that they don't back out. That would be really yeah, disappointing for me. Yeah, and, I, like, and I've made this clear before too. Like, I get it, I'm toxic as fuck. <laughs> like, like, you're I, not I, toxic, I'm it's corrosive. not you. I'm, I'm well, my, the discourse around me is corrosive. Right. I get it, but start your own event then. Like, like right? have, go. go <laughs> Go, we're, we're going to be at Freedom Square. Go to the Lincoln Memorial and have a fucking event five times as big that is nothing to do with the fascist Boogaloo boy Magnus Pen video. Go do right? it. Please. I'm still waiting for Geoff to have his Medicare for All rally. Where are you at, homie? Yeah, Come I'll, on. I'll, I'll consider that the biggest win in the world. I'll clap and cheer. I'll stand on the outside right? of it because you would never let me in and I'll fucking give you a thumbs up and I'll promote it and I'll share it. But 100%. Do you, yes. no, nobody's doing that though. It's literally no. the antiwar.com people in code pink. That's it. <laughs> so it's like step up and i wouldn't have to exist right that's all i'm saying no you're, the video that you put out the other day about how like the unity movement wouldn't even have to exist if like any one of these groups any like you know whether it's libertarians or progressives or whatever if any one of them were actually doing stuff and actually fighting for things um it wouldn't be as necessary for you to do what you're doing um and you know it's it's really frustrating to me that there's so many people who are like arm like armchair quarterbacking activism or whatever and y'all don't get up off your couch like if you're not in the streets if you're not and when when I say in the streets, I get in trouble because that's ableist because not everybody can actually physically get in the streets. When I say that, I mean, if you're not at, like actively doing things, shut the fuck up, shut up. I don't want to hear it from you. I really do not. If you're I like, wanna, like, I like don't want to hear how that's, how that's fucking ableist because a good friend of mine is literally like quadriplegic disabled in a wheelchair and he was fucking zooming around BLM protests. No, that's fair. But I mean, like it. there are people who have like severe anxiety who can't like do the crowd thing. And like, there are certain types of people who I get that. And right. I don't, I don't that's mean fine. to, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But I, but I, when I say get in the streets, I really just mean get involved. If you're not actually doing something, whether it's even like as simple as like making phone calls, sending emails, um, you know, helping promote events or share events or, you know, donating to events or whatever that you, everybody can do something. You can write go, letters. Go, go you can, in the YouTube comments of every single video you can think of and post the link to your right. an action that's happening. Yes. Like, I mean, everybody can do something. And if you're not doing, so, if you're not, if, if all you're doing is criticizing the people who are doing things, I don't want to hear from you. I don't give a shit about your opinion. I really do not. You're not, you're, you're useless. Like you're useless. Less I mean, there, useless. there's like you're this counterproductive. Whole, yeah. <laughs> there's this whole movement around attacking activists, running cover for people who have actual power um, and attacking activists. And that is mind boggling to me. You cannot, I don't, you're not a serious person. You are not a serious person. 
you should, I mean, th- there's no reason why you should be protecting people with power. And then, you know, like literally stop, like people literally stalk me on Twitter and like search for things that they can take out of context and like manufacture outrage over. Oh, That's your um, existence. Like get a life, dude. Oh, our, our, our favorite person in the world created oh. a page called start the damn wars. Oh, the bog hag. Yeah. The bog hag. Uh. I got to say, I'm really glad that I, I'm a, Stu- uh, uh, very meticulous study of U.S. imperialism because, damn, naming it the Patriot Act was brilliant, and that's exactly why I named it "End the Damn Wars." Because now all of these idiots that have to come out across the event have to say out loud, "Do not show up to end the damn wars." <laughs> <laughs> it's not anything for peace. It's not any like flowery. It's, it's straightforward. And if you have to, if you're going to try to oppose it, then you have to be very straightforward in when you say it. Well, that particular person is very clearly unhinged. Um, and you know, and their whole uh, little clan of fucking people. Yeah. That whole crew of people, they don't give a shit. It's clear. They don't give a shit about imperialism. Imperialism It's clear. They don't give a shit about, um, anything really like it's, they went after, it, they went after code pink and antiwar.com. Yeah. No, this is what they, they go after Assange all the time because, you know, he's a rapist and he's a terrorist and he's a white supremacist. Like all of the State Department smears, they they love to throw that at him and they pretend like that has any bearing whatsoever on what's happening to him and how dangerous it is for the rest of us. It doesn't matter. Like he could, I've said this before, he could literally be the worst person on planet Earth and I would still fight against what's happening to him because it's fucking wrong and yeah. it's dangerous for all of us. And it's like it's going to completely destroy the First Amendment. It's going to complete, I mean, it's, it's, but they don't have the ability. Well, I mean, obviously some of these people are ops and this is like a very deliberate thing that they're doing but yeah. um you know if, if you don't have the um ability to think beyond personalities um then it that's on you dude but it, it, it it's just you know again they don't give a shit about actually getting anything accomplished they really and how, don't and how quickly we forget start the damn wars biden has already started the damn wars it was 36 days after he took office that he illegally bombed syria for the first time about a month. He waited about a month until he illegally bombed Syria, until he picked up where Trump left off, where Obama left off. So the wars have been started. If you're just counting the Biden administration, the wars have been started for a long time already. Yeah, we're, we're about to kick it off in Ethiopia. They will not mm-hmm. stop mentioning Ethiopia. I think that's something mm-hmm. that people need to pay attention to. Yeah, we're trying to get a show together for that. Yeah, they're, they're name dropping that country so often and all the usual characters are sliding it into their speeches and into their tweets and their mm-hmm. references that is the next frontier pay attention to this shit they won't shut us as president like it's fucking yeah it's bad us usaid is already doing work there one of the first reports i read was in the new york times about a half a month ago and it had a picture very clearly of people Ethiopians, uh, Tigrays, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The people in the Tigray region, uh, they're fighting the civil war, the civil war against the Ethiopian government. Um, That's a simplistic way of putting it, but for the sake of time. So these people are at an aid center to receive food and other aid packages and very clearly in the picture center of the picture almost is a USAID package. So these CIA cutouts are already there, at least on the ground. Um, Probably special forces ops are somewhere or on their way there. And there are implications. I I, I know, I know people that were deployed to Africa in the last couple of months and they cannot tell me where they are. And that tells me that they're probably yeah. somewhere involved in that because if it was just Somalia, they'd say just Somalia. If, they were, if it was Cape Horn or any of the other bases we have there, they could just say that. But very rarely do my military friends tell me they're being deployed somewhere and they can't tell me where and it doesn't end up being some shit like this. Like, yeah. And, and it has implications for other African countries. Sudan, remember Sudan was all the rage? So there are bodies washing down river from Ethiopia into Sudan, people who have been, who bear all the signs of being tortured and murdered. Some are showing up with their hands bound, uh, with their eyes missing. And these aren't necessarily fighters. These aren't necessarily people who are fighting against the Ethiopian government. They are 
civilians who in all likelihood have been uh, wiped out by or are part of a campaign to be wiped out by the Ethiopian government. So where does that leave Sudan now? I don't know, but it's, it's not just confined to Ethiopia. And um, we're seeing all the same things we've yeah. seen in places like Central America. Yeah, especially, especially when you're going to air into regions that don't exactly recognize borders there's tribal lines across borders there's ethnic lines across borders like they don't it always spreads and that's a very important thing and this is obviously inspired by some of the people who are running the event with me being a sanj activist kind of what we want to do that differentiates us from a lot of other anti-war movements is it's not just focusing on the bombs and the drones and the regular military, we really want to draw attention to what the CIA is doing mm -hmm. because they're like people don't understand the cycle of a bunch of a bunch of ops go to a country and a bunch of NGOs and foreign aid organizations and contractors and everything go into a country years before US troops ever step foot in there. And often they stay years after they leave. You can look at stuff like what you know, with Panama, you can look at stuff in like the South America, a lot, a lot of South American countries where we did you know, anti-drug actions and shit like that, where the, everybody kind of just hung around afterwards. Like this, this is, this is what starts the wars. People don't mm -hmm. realize that. And that's something we really want to hammer on. We want to focus on and why, like somebody mentioned like, Oh, wanting like indigenous activists at your anti-war march. That's a little weird. Like when were we, you know, the, we didn't, we haven't been at war with indigenous people for like 200, hundred beers or whatever. And I'm like, you think that because you don't know about these fucking operations and what these NGOs do and like, God forbid what all the NGOs were doing in Libya before and after the US military and to this day with the fucking slave trade and shit and the arms dealing and everything and the oil, like these are things people need to know about more. And I feel like it, it needs to be harped on way more because the, yes. the, well, the bombs, the drones, the tanks and the guns, that's shit you can see. And the, the media will actually talk about to a degree. Yes. All the other stuff is only shit you're only going to find in some fucking WikiLeaks you know, document or like Scott Horton or like any of these like lower level in the culture talking people, you know? Well, and that's what Julian Assange always says. Um, you know, it, it flies, it, all of the major wars in the past 50 years have been uh, because of lies, um, because of propaganda, because we've been uh, manipulated into them. It, populations don't like war. People don't like war. We don't want to go to war. We have to be lied and manipulated into them. Um, and that's, it's really frustrating. I've noticed um, over the past couple of days, there's been like this weird contingent of leftists who are like, super anti Assange all of a sudden, like coming out and like trashing him and it, but they claim to be anti imperialist. You cannot be anti imperialist and be anti Assange. Nobody has done more to expose empire than Julian fucking Assange. Yeah. yeah. That, that, has, the... that has nothing that I'm sure that has was totally organic and had nothing right. to do with the fact that the Afghan papers were trending on Twitter for three days straight. Right. Yeah. Totally, totally organic. Nothing weird going on there. And they at all. all use the same rhetoric. They all use the same smears. They all, you know, it's the same bullshit. And, it, you know, these are people who claim to be anti imperialist leftists. Um, and it doesn't, again, people like to pretend like it matters what you think of Julian Assange as a person. Personally, I've never met him. I have no idea. He could be the biggest asshole on the planet. That doesn't matter. What matters is um, nobody has done more to expose the crimes of empire. Literally, no, like all other journalists combined don't come, even come close to comparing to the corruption and war crimes and criminality that WikiLeaks has exposed. And they've done it all without ever getting it wrong. And so if you're standing against that, then you are not anti-imperialist. It's just not a thing that you can be. It, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And it, it's this huge yeah, there was, contingent. There was a response to one of your tweets or maybe it was directed at you, I forget, but this woman said, you can talk about politics without having to tie everything back to Julian oh. Assange. It was something like that. And I replied and said, yeah, you can, but you better not call yourself an anti-imperialist if that's the, the line you're going to like take. I like that person. Like she and I are in um, group DMs together. Her issue um, had nothing to do with like me or anything like that, which is here, neither here nor there. But her issue was that she's like really big into um, advocating for, you know, North Korea and all of that stuff, which is fine. But she, her, like she, um, 
like a lot of like she'll tweet something and then a, a, apparently some like nameless faceless Assange accounts will jump into her thread and talk about Julian Assange and she's she was like well I don't know how that's connected and I talked to her in a group DM, DM and I'm like of course it's connected how many lies have been told about DPRK I mean that's that's a whole huge part of why that's you know we we're completely propagandized this is the most propagandized country on earth and she just didn't understand and I'm like it re really it just frustrated me because um all she had to do was like ask me like what well, I don't understand understand why this is connected. And it's obviously that's, it's so frustrating to me that people don't understand how, um, you know, Fiorella took a bunch of shit because she brought Julian Assange up at the March for Medicare for all, um, you know, it, it, but people don't, they are completely incapable of making the connection as to how, um, Julian Assange literally impacts what's happening to Julian Assange, not him, the person, but what's happening to him, Especially, how, yeah. yeah, how that is, how that impacts everything that we're fighting for, everything. We cannot effectively um, campaign for, uh, organize against, like we can't fight for anything if we don't have press freedom, free speech, the ability to um, you know, get information out there. It, 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 I don't know how much more clear that could be. Um, it, it, it goes across issues. It, to me, it's the front line of everything because pr the propaganda game in this country is so incredibly, um, it, it just uh, unbelievably strong. And we have you know five or six corporations who control nine percent of the media that we consume they're seeking global jurisdiction over information and journalism we are going to be forced out of reality that doesn't exist um and that's i mean it didn't start with julian assange but if he's allowed to be extradited and tried and convicted um then that that's that's precedent setting and what was funny to me is like oh what makes what's happening to him so unique are you fucking kidding me the first time a journalist ever a foreign journalist by the way um is charged under our espionage isn't unique to you like that's not a game changer to you are you an idiot or what like and I, think, just... I think it's i think it's like might be because uh all of us are a little bit older than a lot of these people because it's easy to forget that a lot of politics twitter is like fucking 21 year olds and shit yeah. like running around but there uh, the anonymous movement is the least like remembered and understood movement even though despite how extremely like ingrained it is to everything that's going on to where like the the modern anti-war movement comes a lot out of Ron Paul and Anonymous. Anonymous mm -hmm. being essentially like the ground troops of WikiLeaks, giant Assange fans. Like, like, and anytime you'd go to like an anti-war march and anti-police brutality, like I looked back in that video in 2015, there's a fuck ton of Anon masks there. Like a bunch of Guy Fox masks. Like that was that was the militant wing of, of anti-police state, anti-imperialism activism was the Guy Fox mask none of these kids know this they don't understand that like a lot of the organizations and people they rep they they respect are like three degrees removed from anonymous and assange and everything like that on every single issue particularly the police brutality issue like a hundred percent like like fucking an er like early blm protests were essentially like joint like you know like 4chan activists and fucking local black people organizations and shit like that like that was in 2014 and shit like that you go back see hundreds of anonymous mass and shit there mm -hmm. and then they they see that and they look at assange and they do not realize that they're connected they do not realize that these people used to be like your strongest allies like julian assange didn't just blow the like wikileaks blew the whistle on domestic shit too domestic spying police tools on that are used of shit police tools that are used against blm activists now we mm -hmm. would have never known they existed if it wasn't for jillian assange and wikileaks and they don't know any of this history because politics started when donald trump got fucking elected for them and yeah they don't know anything before that well and then i had somebody <laughs> tell me that they um uh, they really want julian to be free but he um is anti-communist so they just don't care oh, what what so you just can't fight for somebody because they don't have the same ideology as you i don't give a shit what his ideology is what i care about is that he um has exposed more you know and you're right it's not just it's not just the war crimes i mean it, he's exposed uh corporate corruption he's exposed i mean seriously vault seven it, it, he exposed how the cia is able to um you know spy on you through your smart tv your smartphone um that they are able to uh like the whole russiagate thing and how there was you know supposedly like there was marks of russia being involved in the hacks well it turns out that 
the CIA can um, just go in there and make it look like whoever they want uh, was involved in something like that. Like they can put in like, you know, certain telltale yeah. signs or whatever. I mean, it, 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 this is, I don't give a shit what Julian Assange believes. What I care about is that he um, gives us unvarnished truth. He gives us 100% authenticated source documentation about corruption and, um, you know, just the bullshit of empire. And that's Im fucking important. If you give a shit about um, having like a legitimate society and being anti-imperialist and all of that stuff, then you should care about what's happening to Julian Assange. It's really yeah. not that fucking and, and, complicated. And, and, and it's what like, does anti-communist even mean? People I don't know. use the term. He's like, not anti-communist. Like communism is unilateral. There's only one. Form Julian of Assange it. has very specifically said that all of our ideologies are bankrupt because we don't even have the, like the truth. You can't have like a legit idea about what your ideology is until you're dealing with the truth. He is not anti-communist. He's never been anti-communist. Um, I, I don't even, he's never really been specific about what his own personal political ideology is. I'd say he's probably like, kind of like a libertarian leaning dude. Um, but that doesn't fucking matter. It does. So you can only fight for people who have the same ideology that's as the, you. That's the thing. Like the thing I said about colonization, it pisses me off because it really seems increasingly that like every frontier of activism, whether it be imperialism, police brutality, government corruption, every, pretty much everything besides the second amendment has been taken over by people that have this very specific belief that if you are anything but a communist, you cannot participate in this protest. You cannot participate in this movement. You cannot discuss about these issues. You cannot raise awareness because you fundamentally view the world wrong and thus any of your critiques or opposition or even putting your body there silently is unacceptable because you are not one of their 38 flavors of, of fucking communism, which, you know, that's the thing I have to explain to even libertarians all the time because even the people preaching this shit don't get God forbid, go on to lefty Twitter and see fucking Leninists and Maoists and fucking like all just go to war with each other all the that's, time. That's that's like, another oh. thing. That's another thing about the people who claim to be communists or pro-communist or whatever they want to label themselves as. It's this blind fealty to both Lenin and Stalin. Like they never did any wrong. Like they weren't genocidal monsters. Like they weren't imperialists at the end of the day. It's like you have to put all of that history aside and worship them as they wanted you to do, especially Stalin. And it's it's this cognitive dissonance that I understand where it comes from because people, they want icons. They want to pretend even that there's a figure there who has the answers, who is who is worth glorifying because they were on the right path. Uh, if only this interference didn't happen or whatever. And we had a guest on once and I tried to bring this up with regard to Stalin and it was, he was like impervious to it. And well, yeah, it's, it's, it's West is bad. So thus anyone who ever opposed the West has to be by default good. And that there's right. no shades, there's no shades of anything anywhere. You know, and like, you, can t you can talk about how the Red Army essentially won World War II and defeated the Nazis, but that doesn't mean you have to support Stalin in any way just because right. he was in charge. Yeah, Miss, Missy, I don't know if you saw that meme I shared of like me, Rome, and my friend yes. Sweetie go getting put into the gulags by the shit libs. Yeah. And, and this kid just had a fucking meltdown in my replies of like <laughs> this is an anti-communist meme and i'm like there's, uh, there's it literally doesn't reference rome is literally about, a communist bitches yeah. it's like it's like it doesn't reference anything about communism it doesn't even, all it has is the word gulag in it it's like well the gulags is a mccarthyist blah 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 lie and i'm like dude it's a fucking meme calm down we're trying to cause a fight here yes he's and he's like this is anti-unity and then like the next reply ever he's like all right wingers just want to kill all communists and i'm no. like shut the fuck up you like so so by that measure dostoevsky was a liar <laughs> and we should read all his books as lies especially the ones that refer to gulags Oof. or or solzhenitsyn was was a liar it's it's Fatuous or Emma, that Emma term Goldman again. or anyone. Oh, I love know? me some Emma Goldman. Like any of any of the people. Oh, I fucking heard that she was a CIA ad asset for Johnson and Johnson. I'm like, the CIA didn't exist <laughs> the time Emma Goldman went to Russia. Shut the fuck up, you. Oh, fuck. God, I love people so much. I really do. Okay, so we. I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, and I do want to make sure that we get all of the information out about the events. Um, so I know September 11th, right? Um, yes. do you want to tell everybody like the whole gist where? 
they can find fundraising, where they can find whatever, how they can get in touch with you if they want to have their own event, all that stuff. Yeah. So, so end the damn wars on Twitter, super easy. Just at end the damn wars. Um, we have our GoFundMe linked there. We also, just because I don't like just begging for money, we have uh, a t-shirt store on Teespring where you can buy cool hoodies and hats and mugs and water bottles and you know, all sorts of stuff that you can do with that. To, that'll help fund us. And at least you'll get something out of it. I think the logo's super cool looking and uh, it's going to be on Washington, DC. September 11th, we have an event planned the day before and the day after because we're working obviously with Assange folks. So we're going to have a little mini Assange event and there's going to be the fuck censorship people there. So we're going to have a little of that. But the main events on September 11th in Freedom Square, which is like Kitty Corner from the White House, that's where we're going to be at. Uh, Scott Horton's going to be speaking there. Fiorella and Pasta are going to be there. Nico's going to be there. Um, we're going to have a bunch of guests who show up. And if you want to start your own local event, all you have to do is DM us. Our DMs are open on that and we will promote it. We'll send you material. If we get higher fundraising, we might even be able to help people like get prints and stuff because the fundraising has been going pretty good. So there's that. And then um, for local events, I'm just scrolling to make sure we have Fort Lauderdale, Arizona. We have New York City. There's Denver, Colorado. And there's a couple more that we haven't directly published yet, but essentially like anywhere in it, pretty much no matter where you are in the country, unless you're like in Alaska or Hawaii or something, there'll be an event within a couple hour drive of you. And that's, that's really important for us. And we want people to start more events all over the place. Like reach out to your local, any political organization, any group or whatever, and just go stand out with some signs. Like this is something I learned from y'all and the Assange movement, like, like having one idiot with a sign, just standing out in front of a police building or something and they're by themselves and they go stand out there for three hours or an hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever, and have one conversation with the person. Great. That's amazing. I have no criticism of that at all. I'm, I'm super sad that one Assange group blocked me because I thought I was making fun of them for that. <laughs> that was really, really messed up. But yeah, no, it's hundred percent. Like that's what we're trying to do. And we're hoping that the other speakers that hopefully don't black back out, we'll be there and they'll show up and yeah, it's, I'm super excited for this. And I I'm think excited for it too. I think it's really important for people to understand that like, I am a, a extremely poor random like dude, like I, there's nothing special or unique about me whatsoever. And just through like a couple getting out there and getting on the streets and some chance happenings and some chance meetings with people, we're now going to have this event in DC. That's looking like it might be pretty, pretty big. And if I can do that, anyone can do that. It just takes a little bit of persistence, a little bit of dedication and a little bit of help from your friends and you can make this happen. So I have always said that my, my goals here are not to get rich or famous or anything. I want to actively work to make myself irrelevant. I want to teach people how to do what I'm doing so they can do it themselves. And then I become a nobody because I'll be great. Cause I don't like, I don't like getting attacked from all 15 corners of the fucking political spectrum yes. all day. So no, that's, yeah. and that's a hundred percent. Like, um, to me, I think that's the most important part is that, and that's when we, when Assange, the Action for Assange group started, that was very much what we, we would, uh, the whole goal was that um, it would spark um, a decentralized movement across the country, across the globe, really, where there would be just um, groups everywhere popping up, um, doing the work. And that would make, we don't want, like, I don't, we don't need to be the face. I don't need to be, like, I have, I would love to just not have to do that. Um, but, you know, I think that there's, there's so much, um, room for people to get involved like you said it really all, all it takes is like a poster board and a sharpie and then just go and stand on a sidewalk somewhere um and that's that's huge like that's a huge a huge thing to do i mean if you can impact just one person from that day that's massive um so i mean everybody can really get involved i'm really excited that you're doing this i'm really excited that we're going to be there we are having assange events too we're going to have actually three days of assange events because that's what we do um so yeah we'll have information on that out too but yeah i'm super pumped to to be in dc um everybody should come out if you can make it if you're anywhere near the dc area show up um or if you're anywhere near one of the other cities that magnus just mentioned show up um and bring friends and um you know help promote the event um share magnus's tweets share the fundraising link all of that stuff we'll link to all that stuff obviously um so everybody share that stuff this is i mean we have to this is the time like we we're out of time like we are out of time nobody's coming to save us we have to do this for ourselves like we have Father. to we have to come together um you know in ways 
ways that we may be uncomfortable with. Like, you know, it, that's okay. It's okay to have uncomfortable conversations with people you don't agree with um, in order to get things done that matter. So, um, you know, that's, we really have to do this. So thank you for putting the events together. Um, I'm super proud of you. <laughs> I know that's like weird. Come a long <laughs> way. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird and maternal of me to say that, but yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, it's cool to see people, um, you know, like you said, you're just some dude. I, I'm just some chick. Jesse's just some dude. And, it, but that's, that's what it takes is just people. Like we, we have to, we're, we're going to have to do this for ourselves. Yeah. Um, so stop, yeah. stop looking for leaders, become your yes. own leader. You can do this. Yeah. 100%. No gods, no, no masters. Power. We're on our own. Let's do this thing. Let's get together and do, there's more of us than there are of them. We can do it. We just have to stop being idiots, <laughs> self-sabotaging morons. That's what we need. Okay. Um, Okay. So yeah, we'll link to all of the stuff so everybody can find the information. Also, Magnus is going to be on bitch next week, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so check that out on Wednesday next week. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming on Magnus. We appreciate you and we'll catch everybody next time. All right. Y'all have a good night.